Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope y'all are doing well. Today we're going to talk about stream processing. The first thing you need to understand when talking about stream processing is the concept of unbounded data. Essentially, unbounded data is an ever-growing infinite data set. That means the data has no end in sight. Over time, it's only going to keep on increasing. Here are some examples of it. The first one is website clicks. Then you have data coming from IoT uh, sensors like temperature or pressure. You have GPS locations coming in. And you can also have things like credit card purchases. The idea is over time, the data is only going to keep on increasing and uh, you can't bound the data to anything. Okay, so now that you know what unbounded data is, let's talk about how it applies in the world of streaming. So when I say streaming, what I mean is a data processing engine for infinite or unbounded data. So it is some kind of a framework or processing engine when you have an infinite or unbounded data coming into your system. So if you look at the diagram over here, let's say you have multiple sources of data coming into app your applications uh, in real time, All right? So you, ha you have credit card purchases, website clicks, and then data from temperature and GPS sensors. All this data are coming in very quickly into your Kafka system. So all of these, they're gonna write messages very, very quickly into your Kafka broker. Now in real time, let's say you wanna do a bunch of different computation on this data. The data did not end up in a database yet. Before putting it in the database, or maybe before showing the data to the client, you need to do some kind of processing in real time. That's where a stream processor comes in, or the concept of streaming comes in. What the stream processor does over here is it listens to different Kafka topics, and whenever a message comes in, in real time, you can comp do some computation or perform some logic as the new data is flowing into your system. And then maybe once you do the computation, you can put it in a database. But the whole idea of a stream processor is it acts on an infinitely and unbounded set of data in real time, as opposed to uh, doing computation on the data later on in time. So yeah, we talked about it being a data processing engine for infinite or unbounded data. You can also see it as ongoing data processing because as data is entering your system, so as data is coming into Kafka, you're doing the processing in real time instead of writing this data into a database and doing the processing later on. Instead of that, you're kind of flipping the last two steps. You are putting the stream processor at first so that whenever the data enters your system, you can in real time with very little latency, do some computation and then put the data into databases. So we talked about unbounded data processing because the data that's coming into Kafka is unbounded and over time, it's only gonna keep increasing. Now, this is the important thing uh, for stream process, for any kind of stream processing, your results tend to be approximate. Right. So, of course, like sometimes if you don't care about uh, time, like the concept of time, you can just get in a receive a data, do some math and produce some output from that stream processor. However, sometimes you have use cases like show me the top five search query in the last in the last hour or in the last two hours. Right. So this kind of computation is being done in real time. So your your top 10, top 20 search results in the last 60 minutes that you compute using the stream processor might not be entirely accurate. It is gonna be a very good approximate, but due to the fact that you're trying to come up with this result in real time and with very minimal latency, your result might be an approximate rather than an exact result. Okay, so some examples to make it a bit more clearer. Let's say every 10, 20 minutes, you wanna update the trending Instagram posts. If you did it in a batch process, of course you could wait 10, 20 minutes and then uh, look at the database for all the posts, do some computation and then show the result. 
However, in the world of streaming, you can do this computation, so the trending Instagram posts in real time. You, you don't have to wait a period of time. As new posts are being created, your stream processor can keep updating the list of trending posts. Similarly, for popular music on Spotify, you can do the same thing. If you, if you move to the world of streaming, you can update the list of popular music as new and new music is being listened to by people instead of a batch process where you only update the result every few minutes or so. Similarly, we talked about trending search queries. You can do it in real time using a stream processor and also top K movies, very similar concept. But the whole idea that I wanna to get to is given you're doing all these computation in real time with very little latency, the result is gonna be approximate in most cases. A batch process or more of like a longer latency process is going to give you more exact results, but uh, you lose the real-time requirement in doing so. Even though in streaming you are getting approximate, uh, you are getting it in very low latency form, which given your application might be more important than getting the exact, exact number. Okay. Now that we talked about the trade-offs in a streaming system, so you can get results in real time and very, 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 very close to the actual result. On the, on the flip side, you are not getting the exact result. You are getting an approximate. Because of that, a lot of companies use something called a Lambda architecture. What that means is they run a streaming system alongside a batch system, okay? So let's say you have some calculation, right? Maybe trending Instagram post or popular music on Spotify, something like this, okay? So you can have two systems calculating the same thing. One is gonna be a streaming system and the other one's gonna be a batch system. Both of these systems, they are gonna essentially be doing the same calculation. However, the streaming system is gonna give you the result with very low latency. So in real time, you're gonna get the result. However, the result can be slightly inaccurate or it's going to be an approximate of the actual result. But of course, the ap approximation is going to be good enough for your use case. And then you have the batch system that can run later in the in the future, right? Maybe two or three, every two or three hours, you have a batch system that's running and it corrects the output of the streaming system. So let's say the streaming system Every single minute, it's running and updating the trending Instagram posts, right? So as new posts are being created and the users are seeing and interacting with these posts, the streaming system is going to keep updating the list to keep up with the demand of the posts. However, let's say every hour or every few hours, you also have a batch system which actually reads the database and computes an exact list of the top 10 trending posts. For a use case like this, it's totally okay to have an approximation as long as your, as long as your trade-off is you're updating that list very, very frequently, and then have a batch later on that corrects the list over time. Okay, so ideally, there should not be any need for a Lambda architecture or running two separate systems together. Streaming engines have evolved quite a bit over time. So historically, a lot of companies did, uh, did deploy a system like Lambda architecture, where you have a streaming system, which is approximate, and then a batch system, which is higher latency, but exactly correct. But given all the improvements that have happened in streaming engines, most streaming engines nowadays can give you very good accuracy along with very low latency. That's what we're going to talk about in some of the next videos I have on streaming architectures. I am going to talk about why there is an appro approximation, how does it work, and how can you get around it. But for now, if you uh, want to know how streaming systems work, do keep in mind Sometimes you do have something like a Lambda architecture. And also keep in mind some of the use cases we talked about. We will come back to these use cases later on 
when we're looking at examples and building them using maybe Kafka, Flink, Beam, and other streaming frameworks. Okay. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'm going to get back to you as soon as I can. With that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of the day and I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.